What's up, Deaners? Today I want to show you all which purple loot room is the most valuable based on my research. This video has been in the making for weeks, and I had to restart when they added the Ragnar bag because I wanted it included in the data set. So I hope you enjoy this video. First, I would like to explain the method behind my findings. I went to each purple loot room 25 times. I recorded myself looking through the loot and cataloged it all in a spreadsheet. I tied each item to its value and had it average out each room's value. I had to guess the value on some items, but I am confident that they are accurate values. The purple keycard is given a value of 50,000 karunas, and the orange keycard is worth 25,000 karunas. This is about the price I imagine they will sell for when the flea market is added to the game. The stoner 63 drum was given a value of 10,000 karunas, and the items that have variable values like the cash pile and electronic wallet were given arbitrary values based on what I had seen to be common when selling them. I gave the electronic wallet 1500 karuna value and the cash pile is 50 karunas. I understand that the electronic wallet can be sold for between 200 and 200,000 karuna and the money stack can be up to 150 karuna, but I wanted to be as conservative as possible and I felt like these numbers were fair for an average. The average value of the rooms are not the expected profit because most of the values I pulled from the wiki is how much you would pay for an item, not how much you can sell it for. So the expected profit is probably around 20% less than the average value of each room. Now that you understand the method I used to come up with this data, let's get into analyzing it. Stick around to the end to find out which purple loot room is my go-to. Let's first talk about the island purple keycard room. Firstly, I'd like to note that if you're looking to score a Ragnar bag, Island is the place to go. Island and the Bridge Tower on Matka Miest are the only possible places to score a Ragnar bag, but I saw it much more frequently on Island. And to quell the rumors, no, Nighttime Island does not have better loot than Daytime. According to my research, the average value is constant whether it is Day or Night Island. So the Island Loot Room has two small cases, a medium case, two large cases, an equipment crate, an armor crate, and a large armor crate. The average value of the island keycard room is 223,949 coronas. With 301,569 coronas being the maximum, and 132,092 coronas being the minimum. Next, let's talk about silo loot room. This room has one small crate, one medium crate, four large crates, a large armor crate, and an ammo can which, by the way, has spawned empty every single time I went there, so I don't think that it actually has any loot, but I felt to include it because they may fix that in the future. This is, in my opinion, the lowest risk room to loot, especially if you can get a three-man squad together because you will have half of the map on your team. That being said, the Silo Vault is, according to the data, the least valuable purple keycard room in Ghosts of Tabor. The average value of Missile Silo is 165,483 karunas. The maximum value was 313,561, and the minimum was 73,442. Silo definitely has some outliers dragging it down, but even without those outliers, it is still the lowest valued vault. However, if you fancy the Dragon of or the Bar, the Silo Vault has several of those. Now, on to Matkimiest. First, let's go over the Bridge Tower Loot Room. For this, I added 5,000 Karunas to quantify the value of the first room and the loose loot spread around the top floor. This is because these are not actually purple loot room values. These are normal loot, but I felt like I had to include a value for them, but didn't want to index all of them because they're not in crates that have the purple loot chance on them. The top floor has one small case, one medium case, three large cases, two armor crates, one large armor crate, and an equipment crate. The average loot value of the bridge tower is 216,415 karunas. The maximum value was 287,483 karunas, and the minimum value was 137,352 karunas. And now for the House of Scott vault. This is the most valuable vault, but it has the added expense of Yorick Skull to be able to get to the vault door, which is worth 20,000 karunas. I added 10,000 karunas to each run to account for all of the loot within the House of Scott, which is quite conservative, because the Ranger Handbook can be found in the House of Scott, which is worth 20,000 karunas itself. The House of Scott vault has four small cases, two medium cases, one large case, one large armor crate, one large crate, one equipment crate, and a filing cabinet. This means the House of Scott vault has the most crates out of any vault. 
the average value of the House of Scott is 228,230 karunas. The maximum value is 331,000 karunas, and the minimum value is 172,823 karunas. In conclusion, I would have to say my rankings for the purple keycard vaults would go Island, House of Scott, Bridge Tower, and in last place, Missile Silo. Island is my top ranking because it is second based on value, but has many points of ingress and egress, making it easier to leave after looting the room. The other three vaults are very easily camped and are extra risky compared to the one on Island of Tabor. My second choice would easily be the House of Scott, since it is the most valuable, has the most containers, and the chance to find valuable loot in just the first area makes the added cost of the skull worth it. The third is Bridge Tower on Montcumiest, and fourth is undoubtedly Missile Silo. I appreciate you watching this video. A lot of time and effort went into putting this together, so I ask that you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.